Hey everybody, how's life treating you? I'm Roland and welcome to Flashback Games. Today we're going to be taking a look at Fate. Fate is a fun RPG role playing game based on this character. It's a dungeon crawler that the character uses skills and abilities to go deep within this dungeon and help the townspeople of Grove. It's a pretty fun game. I love it. I used to play it a little bit in the back of the back in the day, but I never honestly beat it. And today I was hoping I could start this channel and go through the game and just show you all the gameplay and it's really awesome and super fun. I want to use a lot of the magic classes and a lot of the magic abilities so we'll start out with a new character. I think adventure is a bit too easy. I'm thinking hero difficulty perhaps. Yeah that would definitely be best. I mean legend is Legend is probably pretty good, but the only problem with that is there's no mini-map, so you will get lost in those dungeons, and I don't know how to place cursors, or like, you know, markers to show where you've been. So let's try Hero out, and if we can beat that, maybe another character will go through on Legend, who knows. Now, I'm already cool with the male gender as far as the character that we're going to select. Let's check out some of the hairstyles and some of the faces. I remember most of them, but it's been pretty much middle school since I really ever played it. Wow. It's got some basic hairstyles and some basic face styles. What? What is that? That is a mistake. He's going super saiyan. <laughs> oh, man. That's a, that's, isn't that the starting one that I started out with? I'm like, that's really nice, and it's the starting one. Huh. I wonder, I wonder if that one would be any good with the glasses. He kind of looks pretty cool. What in the world tribal could do? Could do? No, I'm just Grizzly Adams over here. <laughs> Some of them are pretty cool, but he's basically going to look pretty much the same. I, I don't know. Let's see, if I pick, if I pick that one, no, no, my hair looks better than that when it's down, it does, I'm sorry, I'm sorry kid, there we go, <laughs> yeah, he's kind of like, kind of looks like me, let's call him, let's call him, he shall be tiny me, Roland, should I go with Roland? Yeah, why the heck not? Put myself in a dungeon. I'll be legendary. No. Raleigh. Perfect. Oh, I almost hit random name. He would have been good God only knows who. Uh... Pet. Cat or doggy. I feel like the dog is made for the male characters and the cat is made for the female characters, but that's probably just... Subconscious sexism. <laughs> no. Let's see. What about... Uh, I'm sorry, I, I like cats. Cats are fluffy. He's cool. I mean, that's a tabby. He's a cool cat. He's a cool cat. I should name him... Well, I don't know if I can name him after one of the cats that I owned, because that's copyright infringement, because he comes when, you know... I named my cat after a famous uh, character from an anime that we all know and love about ninjas. <laughs> you know, ninjas that can mysteriously create chakra and different abilities. <laughs> yeah, and use swirling balls of energy whose names I cannot mention, who can also use electricity. And they search, y you know the ones I'm talking about. Yeah, y you know, you know. He loves ramen, you know. I named him that. Uh, can I technically name the cat that? Yeah, what the heck. Naruto. No, that makes me sad. I can't do that, because that cat, that cat ran away. That makes me sad. It, it, technically, if he ran away, he should have been called Sasuke, but... <laughs> oh... And no, I'm not doing what every freaking tabby owner does in naming him OJ. I'm not doing that. Or Sunshine. It will have nothing to do with his color. Okay, maybe it might have something to do with his color. Maybe. 
I shall name him. Hmm. Now he's going to be going in the dungeons helping me fight off evil monsters and such. What about... What, a, what about... Um, uh, he's got to have a tough name. It's got to be tough sounding. Like something that's just... You know, you see this beast coming down the hallway and, and it, it's coming right for you. What's the name of that... Um, like a sun when it starts to go white dwarf... It's like a red giant. Uh, let's see, red giant? No, no, he's he's definitely yellow. What about solar flare? Can I fit that? Oh, dude, please let me fit that. Solar flare. Sin's oldest living memory. The dungeon gate has stood in the heart of the old wood. Its doorway leads to infinite possibility, to subterranean lands fabled in stories and myths. Many adventurers have passed over that ancient threshold, some to find fame, glory, and wealth beyond telling, and others never to return. The town of Grove has ever been the safe haven at the dungeon's mouth, a watering hole and resting place for weary adventurers. Here, great tales are told by the inn's fire. Journeys are planned and legacies are made. The minstrels sing of the great feats of heroes long gone, and statues ring the square, a testament to their deeds. After traveling many hard and dusty days, you and your faithful companion arrive at last in the fabled forest town, which waits beneath the long shadow of the gate. Within these walls lies the path to infinite adventure. It is here that you will test your worth, and perhaps find fortune and glory along the way. It is here that you will determine... Oh, you see how they worked the title in there on there? I like that. That's pretty cool. Look at that title working in on there. Sorry I was so quiet for the longest time, but I wanted to let you, you know hear and read the basic opening storyline. I've, I've always loved that intro. It's always been a, just a great way to start a game. Tales tell of a great arch fiend whose name is spoken in whispers. Broad Thane. For centuries it has waited on the 48th level of the dungeon, its evil seeping up toward the town. You must destroy it once and for all and rid the world of its evil influence. It is your fate, adventurer. Will you meet it? Yeah, sure, we got this. No big deal. <laughs> Your journey has okay. begun. I didn't want to say anything during the load screen, because for some reason during the load screen, the game always just... Like, my recording program just bugs out. It goes so slow at first. Okay, we don't have much time. Wait, no, I'm doing a 20-minute recording. We've got plenty of time. Yeah, that's right. I bought Bandai Cam. I can record as long as I please. <laughs> I'm going to try for 20-minute episode recordings, though. That way it just doesn't get ridiculous. And unfortunately, my timer that I'm using keeps going out and going black, so it might be a little bit over 20 minutes, but we'll try to make it not too far. Now, I've got 250 gold points or GP, which is not going to be gold points and they can't stop me. <laughs> you have, oh my goodness, what is all this gobble to go through? I don't want to hear. Well, that's the controls, which are very important. But I don't need it. I remember controls. I want to run everywhere because this walking, this walking stuff, way too, way too slow. How may I help Magic you? Magic items and spells are my stock and trade. Would you like to see my wares? Hmm. Oh my. Stuff is expensive. Stuff is so expensive. Hmm. If you'll excuse me. One moment for a, a, a swig of coffee. I am so sorry. <laughs> 
I have an addiction. <laughs> Can't be helped. I think everything here is too expensive for me. That's what I think. I start off with Identify Scroll and Town Portal Scroll. Nice. Solar Flare! He's awesome. Now, if I were to you, sir, uh, I've got starting with three potions. Now, I know. I, I don't really want to do it right now because it's not really fair but I'll show y'all just in case you ever pick it up again because again of course this is flashback games and the reason for my channel the reason I want to do it is to bring back the memories of games that people used to play and they say oh hey I remember that game that was really fun I want to play that again and if they, if they ever decide to pick it back up again like I have there's tons of games that I play from back in the old days that have nostalgia for me. I play them basically because I remember them as being really fun when I was usually in middle school or high school. And I know a little cheap trick that you can do that probably everybody already knows, but maybe uh, they've forgotten. On no matter what difficulty you choose, as far as I'm aware, it starts you out with 250 gold points. The very first thing you can easily buy with 200 gold would be this nice, lovely fishing pole. It will leave you with 50 gold remaining. You might want to just buy a couple of potions. Now, what this fishing pole will do will allow me to catch fish. What those fish do is transform my pet into a beast. It can transform the pet into almost any random monster found within the dungeon. Now, the added benefit of that is the fact that those monsters often have stats much higher than a level one kitty cat. Now, just for the purpose of doing this, I will show you how broken this way to start the game actually is. We're going to place these two scrolls over here. Place this fishing pole here, which I love that there's actual item management in here. It adds a little bit of strategy. Now, with this 50 gold remaining, I don't know if I'm going for mana or HP on this character yet. I'm going to try to make sort of a mixture of mana and HP. I want to be able to summon things so that I can show the players some of the summons in the game and some of the awesome spells. That's one of the difficulties with YouTubing RPGs is the fact of, you know, the question is, what class do I pick in order to actually show the most possible gameplay? Should I be a warrior and swing around big gigantic axes and maces and show all the players the awesome melee skills of the games? Or should I put all of my stats into magic and be able to show the players the awesome spells that the game has available to you. Oh my goodness, I can summon a skeleton, I can throw a fireball, I can summon down clouds of lightning, but the player might never see me, you know, walking down m mobs of monsters like Batman, just tanking them all, which is really fun in a lot of ways. So I figured it might be good to go with a balance between those two, and of course there's also archers that, you know, shoot from a range with arched spell, or like, you know, their bow and arrow. That's also really cool. I don't know of any broken builds on the game yet, but who knows, we might actually find one. I just know of a really cheap method for quickly and easily getting very broken very quickly with your pet. Like, for example, um, I'll catch maybe one or two fish, just to show you the effect of what they can actually do. Hopefully I don't miss. You have to time it. Just perfect eye and I, of course, missed. Now, what I was saying is that, oh, well, that's too fast. What I was saying is that basically, I'll catch one or two fish just to give you an example. Ah, there we go. To show you ruby ring. Oh, that's good. Let's see, inventory. Okay, that's just the ruby ring. Whenever you catch jewelry, uh, you're just going to catch the jewelry out of the fish, not the actual fish itself. I'll show you an example, if I can catch a blast of fish, of the stats before and after. Basically, how effective the pet is before I apply the fish to feeding him, and how effective the pet will be after he transforms into one of the dungeon creatures with additional stats, which will be very impressive, I believe. Even at level 1, it's ridiculous. And I'm only going to catch one fish because this is taking far too long. Fingerling Arrowfish. Now, let's check on that. 
Place into pets icon or right click to feed to pet. Now this is the pet feeding icon. You just drag and drop it right there. That is the pet's stats. It'll show you what all the pet has in terms of strength, speed, stamina, all that good mess right there. It's auto-selected so you can't interact with it. They automatically level up on their own. Pet inventory is the inventory that the pet can carry by itself. It can also return those uh, inventory items to town for you which will also regain its health, which is another cheap trick that I use, <laughs> which I'll show you later. Transforms pet into greater basilisk for one minute, or excuse me, 120 seconds, which is 1660 is 120, so that's two minutes. That gives in, uh, strength plus five, dexterity plus 10, vitality plus eight, magic plus zero, and armor improved plus 10. Now that doesn't sound too impressive so far, but he's going to be a beast, and you're going to see it. It's, it's going to be epic. Now let's pick up a few quests from some of the NPCs around town, which is basically how you progress through the game. You pick up the quests, you go into the dungeon, you slay the monsters that they want, or you fetch the items that they want. I haven't really seen a diversity of quests so far. It's basically just slay and fetch, slay and fetch. Oh, and if you're not slaying, guess what you're doing? You fetch it. But that's all sort of a backdrop to what the game is really all about, which is the massive amount of items, classes, skills, spells, summons. Yeah, that's a zombie. I'm going to pick up a quest from a zombie. You heard me right. Murr. Abentra, the noxious gel, has assembled an army of death caps and is advancing on the town from level one. Oh, well, he'll be here pretty quick then. Help us by defeating them, and the town will reward you for your bravery. You can find the dungeon entrance on the east side of town. I almost declined that. I have received a quest. Let me check on my audio recording real quick. I... Next time in the video, for next episode, I will actually make it so that the screen does not um, go out on my timer so that I can actually see the available time. We're at 18 minutes so far, but see, I can't see that because the screen keeps going out. I want to at least pick up two or three quick. I wish I could go into buildings. That would be so awesome. I want to, I want to at least pick up two or three quests in order to be able to actually show you some of the gameplay. Wraith Crawler, the Noxious Gel has, and can I just say that I have, I'm sorry I broke character right there. Can I just say I love their names for mobs on this game. They're wonderful. I love them. Wraithcrawler, the Noxious Gel, has assembled an army of death caps and is advancing on the town from level 3. Help us by defeating them and the town will reward you for your bravery. I'll give you this Izuk's Native's Initiate's Robe with the Crone as a reward. Now, now Reeves, Initiates. Oftentimes in this game you're going to see me mispronounce a lot of the things that they actually ask me for because of some of the items on here are ridiculous in the way that they're actually pronounced because their names are ridiculous and that's not my fault you have but I do like it the game developers put a lot of time and effort into you know thinking of original names you know the best thing I can think of as a name for a cat is solar flare you know they've got these amazing names of all these incredible items that you can gather and it's just like for example this here they, I can't even pronounce that. I'm going to try. I'm going to cut. I am going to absolutely cut the statement to ribbons. The Yasmoreths, Yasmoraths, Light Belt of Strength, an artifact that has long guarded our fair town, has been lost. Beasts came in the night and stole it away. I've heard to level three. Return it and Gruel will reward you. I'll give you this flaming crude morning star of basics as reward. You can find the dungeon entrance on the... Oh, I won't read that each time. <laughs> I think we, we know where we can find the entrance you to the dungeon this time. Quest. I think we know by now where we can find the entrance to the dungeon. Starting off with just a tiny wood chopping axe. I've never felt too safe about that, honestly. You know what? I'm going to venture out on a limb here and say that this is the big old entrance to that big old dungeon. You reckon I'm right about that? Let's give it a shot, shall we? Yeah, 
Oh, prepare for frame rate tankage. Every time I go into a loading screen, the frame rate is basically going to tank, but that's just something that we'll have to learn to live with. In episode two, I'll be able to work out any kinks or bugs that I noticed in the recording of this episode, because it's not live streaming, but it is sort of live in the fact that any any mistakes that are made, either I have to edit them out um, and be really good about it, or we're stuck with them, or at least I'm stuck with them. I, I don't want to say my viewers are stuck with them. You guys are, you guys are innocent. You don't deserve bad quality, which is why I will try to bring you good quality. Okay, we got some gold there. Hey, our first enemy. Kill it with fire. We don't have fire yet. Kill it with an axe. Giant beetle. Okay, these are basically some of the first starting enemies that you're going to find down here. They're not too bad. They're they're all right. You know, they they don't necessarily rehash the same enemies over and over again, which is what I like. They change little tweaks about them later on. Now, obviously, if you go through the entire game, you will see the same types of enemy multiple times: the giant spiders, the giant ghosts, the giant uh, beetles. And I just said ghosts, which means for those of you who aren't flashback gamers and haven't played this before, I spoiled one of the enemies and I'm sorry. <laughs> it brings me great sadness to spoil things for you. Oh my gosh, please tell me that the map is available or I'm screwed. Map? Oh thank god. <laughs> I get lost without maps. I don't I don't do no maps. No maps is not what I do. That's not my thing. That's not my bag baby. Because, I mean, imagine in this low-level dungeon, like this low lighting, having to find your way around manually. You now, you'll see me walking, which means I'm out of stamina, and I have to run for a bit. Stamina is recharging. Do I have any stamina potions? No, I do not. Ah, let me show you an example of before and after. This is my pet before. You saw him fight. He was pretty good. Your pet has been transformed. My pet has been transformed. Has been he is now a giant freaking lizard, which is one of the dungeon mobs. Spoiler alert. A little late for that, Russell. But, what you'll see is now he kills like a beast. Watch him take these two enemies on. The oh, he also has freaking laser eye beams! He's, he shoots freaking lasers from, freaking, from his freaking face like a shark. That's what he does. I just love the way they move. Very animated. But basically he can take most of the mobs by himself at this point. Now, if you see a red glow around any of the monsters wandering around the dungeon, follow them cautiously, as that happens to be a boss mob. Mmm. Oom. Okay, I'll pronounce his name later. I have to fight now. Pronouncing later, fight now. Come on, you can take him, Solar Flare. I've got to handle these guys. They're all coming up on coming up on me from the front and the back and left and right. Nope, no pun intended. Now, I think am I? Yeah, there we go. I'm still able to peer around corners, but I can only peer this way. Looks like he dropped a small socketed shield and a spear, or a small socketed something and a spear. Unfortunately, he was not currently worth a quest. Uh, this is my hot bar. Pressing any number of 1 through 6 on the hotkeys will activate the selected potion underneath that slot. Let's press 6 and get a little bit of our health back, just for now. He's getting low on health, and he's only got 16 seconds left of his lizard transformation, or his greater basilisk transformation. What is this? This is a rare item, I believe. Oh gosh, I hope that's not a mimic. Please don't be a, mim a mimic. Oh, thank God. Sometimes those chests that glow like that are actually mimics, and if you activate them, they will tear your face off because they hate you, and they hate everything about you. They will tear your face off. It is all they will do, it is all they, will, they care about, is tearing your face off. We've got lots of gold, lots of various items. I still, has I not, I didn't open that. No! Oh, these are tough. Okay. Get ready for the potions. Cursed sword. Okay. Oh, oh, we got him. Notice I had to take a potion or we would have died. Now, 
Notice this, the irony in this. Regular chest, evil enemy. Possible mimic chest, nothing but gold. They, they, they played me. I got played. Like a fiddle. Now, let's open up the map. Map, map please, thank you. I'll learn eventually, one day. And head back towards where I saw the, where I saw the, uh, entrance back towards town. We're gonna go ahead and save our progress and, uh, get back to more episode later. Because I'm pretty sure we're over 20 minutes now. I don't even have to look at the timer. I don't have to look at the timer to know that. We're probably at about 25, 30 minutes. I have no idea. I am exhausted. Shut up. Ascending the stairs to the town will... I don't think that resets all of your dungeon progress on that specific level. I don't believe it does. But another nifty little trick that's fun to learn in early game is to do this. I don't believe she even charges money for it. The healer, this town healer like, uh, right here, this nice little lady, Drayla the healer well will heal you, I believe, for well free. Met. 229 gold heal. Still 229 well gold. Well and she heals your pet, too, because she's an animal lover. That's just what life is all about. Now, I believe next episode we'll try to complete one of the actual quests. But for today... It went very well. We made our character. We, uh, I showed you a few tricks. And I showed you a few battles. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching.